Mac, what are we doing? We are creating a coffee cart. Woo! joined by John, our subject matter expert, <laughs> is actually our service lead that um, knows a lot more about electrical and plumbing than we do, here to kind of give us a guide on what to do with this coffee cart we've got our hands on. So You're literally here to keep us grounded. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Up till this point, we've talked about kind of our uh, business plan, our aesthetics, our equipment. Um, and now we need you to kind of help make our dreams come true. I have given you a list of the equipment that we need. From that, what I'm hoping is that you've calculated exactly what we need for power and plumbing and that you can kind of just walk us through that. We are going to be plugging in this cart. We're not going to be relying on a generator or a battery or anything like that. Um, so some sort of uh, electrical box needs to be in the cart. And I'm curious what you've been thinking about. Yeah, so when you gave me the list of equipment, I looked at specifically Amtral. Mm. We know it's all going to be 110 volt powered equipment, right. no 220. Yep. So we don't have to worry about that. But when I look at the amperage, uh, we're about mm, like 19.3 amps. And what that means is we're under 20 amps, but we're just barely under it. And why that's important is because what we need to do in this case is for best practice, we need to do two separate circuits. And if you look at the breakdown of that amperage, the espresso machine by far pulls the most amps. So we would just segregate that from the rest of the equipment and have that run on its own circuit. The machine, uh, as it's set up right now, only requires 15 amps. But if you were working in a situation where somebody was going to, you know, you were going to order power you might want to do 20 amps just to be safe right. on that end. On the other side, all the other equipment is marginal in its amperage. Technically, you could run that off of a 15 amp circuit with no problem. Again, if it was feasible and it was available, 20 amps, just safer, you just have that overhead. But you would want two separate because if you were to operate all the equipment, it's unlikely that you'd be pulling all the max amps at one time, mm. but you just want to make sure that espresso machine has enough headroom so you're not blowing circuits right. uh, on the other end. So if we were to just mount a simple power strip to the back where everything's running through one circuit, that would put us in a bad position. Yeah, that, that would be bad. Uh, a lot of the power strips uh, that are sold out there actually only rate it for 15 amps. Yeah. Uh, so you would easily, I mean, the power switch has a, uh, a reset or a surge protection. Once it hits the uh, amp max that it's rated for, mm -hmm. that will turn itself off. Right. Um, so that would constantly be happening to you when you're trying to run the car, which would not be helpful at all. Right. Gotcha. I was talking to Ryan about solutions for what you would bring with you in certain, certain circumstances. One solution is the Cafe Works power cube. Yeah. You want to take a look at that? Yeah. And this is a very simple solution. And what they've done here is they've built basically a, a box that is easy to transport and more or less has two separate power strips. Now we were talking about before, you don't really want to have a single power strip you plug it into. Mm -hmm. uh, again, they're rated for 15 amps. So in this case, we have two separate power strips with two separate, what I would call like a whip which is basically the cord and cable coming off of it. This would allow you to do what I was talking about before, finding two separate outlets on two separate breakers, and Sweet. you would assign one side to the espresso machine and the other side to everything else. But in some circumstances, this may not be the most optimal solution, um, especially if you're working with higher power needs. We also have this Cafe Works electric power distribution panel it's fairly lightweight. Uh, it's got a plastic enclosure. It has specific breakers that are aligned with these outlets. These are actually on their own circuit. So the black is its own circuit, the red is its own circuit, the gray is its own circuit. Mm -hmm. That is associated with a 20 amp breaker over on this side. So it's kind of like having your own uh, power panel that you would have in your house, oh, but it's, it's modular and transportable. Uh, so this one actually is rated for 220 volts, 50 amps. You know, if you were using a larger espresso machine, you would be using 220 volts. 
So this is a good option if we have to scale, uh, up. scale up equipment. Yeah. We could use this distribution panel for what we're doing with this cart. It's a little bit of overkill, but allows us to be prepared for future situations when we need to have higher volume. Excellent. Are you feeling as empowered as I am? That was awesome. Sorry. <laughs> Can't resist, guys. <laughs> so next I want to talk about plumbing. Um, we are going to be running an external pump on this cart, uh, not relying on the pump inside the machine. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been thinking about there? Like you said, we're running a pump that's going to siphon water mm -hmm. out of a jug. What we're going to use is a pump system similar to the one we're looking at right now. SureFlow or AquaTech uh, pump on one side and then an accumulator. This one particularly we're using is rated for 1.9 gallons per minute. That gives us enough pressure and flow rate to operate the equipment as directed by the manufacturer. This one in particular uh, is, is the Cafe Works. Uh, I think it's rated for a 1.5 gallon per minute. They've associated it with the Luca A53, yep. which we're using. The only reason uh, why I'm using this specific system that we have is our pitcher rinser actually asks for 1.9 gallons per minute. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if we were using a 1.5 gallon per minute pump system with the pitcher rinser, I wouldn't be that worried because yeah. it's not, you don't have to fill anything. You're not meeting any sort of flow rate for brewing. It's just extra pressure to, to rinse. Right. So just for clarification, we have a pump accumulator system. That's not the one shown on the screen here. It is rated for 1.9 gallons per minute. This is a great example of something that's just like ours, just rated for a little bit less capacity, but a great option if you're running a similar setup like ours, uh, maybe without a pitcher rinser. So uh, for those who don't know, can you talk a little bit about what an accumulator is? Yeah, so uh, the accumulator is basically a small pressure tank. What it's doing is it's creating sustainable pressure throughout so that we have more consistent pressure for our brewing equipment, yep. which we all know is important. Uh, it also helps protect the pump. Uh, if we were to not have anything on the outbound side retaining some sort of pressure, we can get cycling cavitation of the pump. Mm -hmm. uh, and generally, that's just not good for it if that happens over a long period of time. Right, yeah. You want your extraction to be smooth and consistent as well, not yes. pulsating pressure all over the place. Exactly. Too. So. So we're running out of this uh, into our espresso machine, and then we have a pickup tube that's coming out of our reservoir here. Do you want to talk a little bit about kind of the pathway as it comes out all the way to the drain? Yeah, sure. So it's, it's very simple. The pickup tube is a uh, plastic tube. Uh, this tube then hooks up to our system, and the pump pumps the water out of the jug. Mm -hmm. Then we go into the accumulator, which helps us, again, sustain uh, a constant pressure. Then we go out of that and we're going to split off into the equipment that we're using that needs water. Well, it sounds like things are going to flow pretty well. Oh. <laughs> I had to get it <laughs> We're one for one now. <laughs> what about um, choosing the right pump flow rate based on equipment? Like how, mm, how yeah. do you add everything together and calculate what is needed. So if you're looking for the flow rate and the pressure that's required from the pump system that you buy, mm -hmm. basically you want to look at the manufacturer specs for the equipment that you're using. That will give you a minimum and maximum flow rate and or pressure. If we look at the manufacturer specs for the pitcher rinser, it asks for a minimum flow rate of 1.9 mm -hmm. gallons per minute. If we look back at our pump, it's 1.9 gallons per minute rated at 60 PSI. So in this instance, uh, why this works for us is because the one piece of equipment here that requires the highest amount of pressure when we're talking about, or flow rate, is the pitcher rinser mm -hmm. uh, compared to the espresso machine. But we know that our pressure output from the pump, because it's rated at 60 PSI, does not go higher than the six bar or about 87 PSI maximum. Uh, that the manufacturer of the Luca A53 recommends. If we were operating, say, a larger espresso machine or more pieces of equipment that required water supply, this may change and we may have to use a system that has a higher flow rate and or a higher pressure. So but that's why it's important to look at those manufacturer specs and understand what requires what and make sure we're in that window. Right, looking at our minimums and our maximums 
make sure we don't overshoot. Exactly. And there are some cases where uh, it may be more complicated, where say a piece of equipment operates at a pr specified pressure that's higher than something is recommended. Yeah. Uh, when we get into that, there are pressure regulators mm. uh, that you can use to control pressure outbound. So we can supply this piece of equipment with the amount of pressure that it needs from the system based on the system rating. And then we can actually reduce pressure with uh, this pressure regulator going to this piece of equipment uh, so that we, we don't put too much pressure into that piece of equipment. Um, possibly causing problems with uh, with the plumbing in that piece of equipment. Yeah, sending your milk pitcher rocketing off. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've seen I've seen the uh, the pitcher in series. I've seen them hit the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, options for people who don't have a fixed cart, right? So we have the luxury of being able to mount that system to the back. Folding carts are pretty popular nowadays. Mm -hmm. And with that system, you cannot keep something mounted. Let's talk about the, the Connect Cube from Cafe Works that you can also find on our site and why that's advantageous. Yeah, uh, so the Connect Cube is a pump system similar to the one we're using, mm -hmm. but it's built into a portable box that also has basically an output manifold for your equipment. As we can see here, this one specifically, it's a sink, rinser, filter. You know, I guess the filter would be going to your espresso machine or brewing equipment, rinser, obviously a rinser, sink, like a hand sink. But what's nice is it's, it's made this system in a nice, clean, compact uh, design. We can easily move in and out of our collapsible uh, uh, setup that we're working with. Yeah. I honestly actually like this too, even if we have a stationary car. Mm. There are uh, trade-offs when you go down this road because this sits possibly you know, on the bottom of the cart or on the floor, and it's gonna take up space. So the reason why in our cart we're using this mounted system is we wanna keep that ground level space clear so yeah. we can use it for storing cups and sure. you know, the water bottles and the, the drain uh, jug. And, and in some cases, this may not be a great solution if we don't have a lot of room. But it is a nice solution for creating a uh, three output manifold and a condensed pump system for, for our needs. It just keeps things nice and clean and, and easy to work with. One more thing that comes to mind is water filtration. Now, a lot of people are going to be you know, drawing potable water from another source, um, but some people might have to use tap water. Um, and in that case, what are some con considerations you need to make when mounting a filtration system, does that affect the pressure required from your accumulator? Whatever filtration you're using should have a specified uh, pressure. This is important because we want to make sure that the water is flowing through the filter effectively to actually filter the water the way it needs to be filtered. Yeah. But also because we're basically creating some resistance in our flow path, your outbound side of the filter will have less pressure than your inbound at some yeah. points. You need to keep an eye on that. Sometimes that information can be found in specs, but it deviates depending on what the inbound pressure is. Uh, luckily, if we're using a pump system going into it, that's more or less gonna stay consistent. So if we know generally what the outbound pressure is with that pump system, then we know what we're working with. Mm. You can also get modular gauges that would plug in line so you can see what your outbound pressure is right. uh, if you're ever curious. And that would be helpful if sometimes uh, uh, in situations where like a, a convention or whatever, they can supply water to you, you don't know what you're gonna get. So it's nice to know like what that outbound pressure is gonna be yeah. no matter what the circumstances. And when we're measuring our outbound pressure, we wanna make sure that we're measuring it after the filtration system, not directly from the accumulator. Correct, correct. Yeah. correct. Cool, well, I think that just about covers all of our electrical and plumbing needs. Yeah. I'm just really excited to get all of this installed and working finally. Yeah. So. It's getting all of its glory. Oh man, for sure. it's gonna be great. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for joining us, John. Of course. Thanks, thanks John. For me. You're the best. <laughs> thanks for joining us on this journey to build a coffee cart. For more resources just like this, check out the Prima Coffee Community linked in the description below. I'll see you there.